Well, hi everybody. How's it going? I hope it's going well with you. Uh, I haven't been doing much video work here lately. I've been busy in the studio and working on uh, doing some painting and, and doing some uh, banjo repairs on a couple of banjos. And uh, I just uh, remembered I should be on the internet when I'm talking about and working on these instruments. So. About a year, a couple of years ago, I was at a flea market in Nashville and picked up a violin that was in pieces. It was a, it's this instrument right here. It's a, it's a Suzuki. It's a Japanese violin that uh, was in pieces. It was, a, it was completely disassembled, including the fingerboard and uh, everything. So uh, I just decided I was gonna tackle this had been sitting around I'd like to I'm sure somebody might be interested in a half size violin uh, for, for a young child learning how to play so uh, I thought I'd finish that up and and also work on the case the case is in uh, was in real bad shape it, uh, the case itself the outside is fine but the inside was all torn out on the bottom uh, the, the top was intact but the bottom was completely removed. I don't know why, but they did that. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd tackle this uh, repair. Uh, I really enjoy working on and making violins, and uh, I just decided I'd knock this one out. Um, this is the finished product here. I had to put a new bridge on it. Uh, I made the bridge myself. Uh, uh, I was kind of impatient. I wanted to I had other parts assembled and I didn't have a bridge and I didn't want to wait for it so I had the wood so I thought I'd just attack doing something like that. It's not stellar, it's not precision, but it is totally functional and uh, does the job. So, And I picked up some pegs for it and installed those. I was fortunate I didn't have to uh, ream out the holes, they were pretty, pretty, in, pretty intact. Um, I didn't have a tailpiece, so I had to get a new tailpiece. Um, this is a, a cheap uh, instrument, cheap tailpiece that's aluminum, but the nice thing about it was that along with being inexpensive, it already had the fine tuners in, and since it's metal, they should work fine for a long time. And it, they work great. I mean, I put a little oil in them and loosen them up a little bit, but uh, otherwise they work fine. I made my own tailpiece. I, I had one. Uh, but it, uh, I just decided to use this one uh, that I turned on a lathe. And I had an old chin rest that I salvaged from a previous job and I just stuck that on there and it works, works fine and fits this half size violin. So uh, it had two holes in the back. I have no idea why that was. Two it looked like two holes that were drilled in the back. Uh, so I had to fill those, and, uh, and then I tried to polish the, the heck out of it. It had a real bad finish on it, but I managed to get it uh, shining and looking a lot better. The edges are, are uh, in pretty rough shape. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the finish on them, they're, they're, they're not too, I don't know if you can tell. They shine a little bit, but they're, they could be better. Anyway, but I just wanted to get this back in working order for, for someone to play. And along with that, work on the case. So I thought I'd share you uh, share with you what I'd done. And so we'll just let this project proceed. One more thing I wanted to mention to you that I don't think I mentioned in the video is uh, I use this, it's called a premium tracing pad paper. And when you're, when you're, recovering a, 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 a case like that, you really need to have a template for the different elements that go into it. So having something like this that you can place inside the instrument and rough out and then refine the edges, uh, it's, it's hard to, uh, to find a, how that works. If you were just, to, you could just lay the material in, I guess, and cut along the edges, but I found that even with an X-Acto knife that they don't cut this particular material very very readily. So I wanted to make a template so I could get real close with uh, the dimensions. So I, I used this, uh, and this paper is really excellent for making templates. 
So I thought I'd share that with you. And let's let's get on and look at what we did. Well, I just got finished putting in this last piece. I was going to show show you doing it, but uh, the tape wasn't working properly. The video. Um, I cut this this last little square that fits in the side here, just a hair wider, probably a couple of millimeters wider than the space, just to make sure I had enough material to push into the corners. So. A little more is better than a little less when you're covering material, covering cases like this. So um, as long as you don't have any any uh, tension on the fabric that you're putting in, uh, you can use this kind of glue. It works just fine. It's called Loctite Spray Adhesive. There's probably others out there that are similar, but it's... Um, it uh, bonds the non-stressed areas just fine. Um, where you get into trouble, like I have inserted in here uh, some foam rubber, uh, foam padding that I use for some seating that my wife and I put together. And uh, it, it's, under, it's under tension because of, because of the nature of the of foam and so you have to be careful when you're gluing. I would not recommend using this kind of material on that. Um, there's another thing that I like to use. It's called Aileen's Tur Turbo Tacky Glue. This stuff here. And uh, <clears throat> that works really well for fabric when it's under tension. The, the downside of that is that you have to clamp it and let it set up before you take the clamps off. Um, so it's not as quick as the uh, spray adhesive. Spray adhesive, you apply it and it starts sticking right away and you don't have to worry about it. But uh, <clears throat> this is a... Uh, so, so I've had to come behind since I was using that spray adhesive on this. I've had to come behind and reinforce these edges. Um, see what else I can tell you. Um, this is a custom setup here. I didn't, uh, it was completely empty in here. Uh, there was somehow somebody had taken out the, all the uh, all the fabric like this uh, fabric from here. I don't know why but it was all gone so we had to get as close as we could with a match. I went to the f fabric store and uh, this was as close as I could come. It's kind of a more spongy felt. Uh, this is stiffer with longer fibers but that was all I could do and so that's what I did. And uh, it, it came out well. Used a, used a, some eighth inch board this material here uh, for the uh, inside of these and use the spray adhesive to cover those and uh, I did use I did use the tacky glue um, I came back and did, did the tacky glue when I was gluing to the boards because I didn't trust this Loctite especially on the edges that's that's where you had to be concerned was on these edges so it's better to use the tacky glue on that then you don't have to worry about it coming off because that stuff dries really hard. I put these old uh, tabs with just some leather cut out. I, I didn't want this whole thing to look too too fancy and new and perfect because it's old and this section is old so more in keeping with the general feel of the of the case um, uh, I just get, tried to give it a used look you know and uh, I, th I think that that was probably the be best way to go. So that's about it. 
um, the violin in the case and I'm all set to sell it to somebody who uh, needs a half-size violin. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>